Howdy folks. Uh, today we're going to go over third party APIs. Um, and we're not going to talk, we're going to use fetch during this, but we're not necessarily going to talk about how to use fetch um, or like the intricacies of it. I might save that for another video. This is going to be more focused on how to use third party APIs, how to get access to them, how to look at their documentation, things like that. So uh, the first thing you have to do, let's just make a page here. Okay, so we've got our document, third party APIs. We're going to put a script in here, script, and okay, so now we have our page. What is an API that we can use? Well, one place you can look is um, called Rapid APIs, Rapid API. Um, this is a site that just has a bunch of different APIs. Like you can see, they just have a lot of different things. Um, if you're looking for a specific, you want to go developers. Um, they have a whole ton of APIs that you can use here. Let me see, how did I actually get to? Yeah, here it was. This is the one. This is actually their Rapid API um, client. We don't really care about the client. We're not going to use that. I thought this would give me the list. That's okay. But I found a civic movie database API here. Now, uh, this does cost some money if you want to use a lot of requests. Um, so what they do here is if you subscribe with basic, um, oh, they require a credit card for freemium API. Hmm. I don't know if I want that. So you could see some of these, maybe we won't actually use this one. We'll just use it as an example. Um, if you do a thousand a day, which isn't that bad, um, then it's a cent for everyone after that, or you could pay them some money. If you know, this is actually not too bad for uh, unlimited requests. If you have a lot of people hitting your API for movies. Um, so one of the things you want to look at then is their endpoints. Okay. So let's take a look at what endpoints they have. They have a couple things here. Here's their endpoint list. Um, here's the actual endpoint data, and here's code snippets and example responses. This is important. This will tell you a lot of useful information. So see we have by search or by ID or title. So if I look here, get by search, you can tell right here it's going to be a get API because they have get, so the method is going to be get. Um, the request URL is going to be this. So you can see they have their specific movie database alternative .p .rapid API. Um, there's nothing after the slash, and that's completely fine. The header parameters. Remember we talked about headers. These are metadata that goes along with the API. The first thing is the Rapid API key. Um, if you have signed up with them and have an account and have paid to use this API, then they will give you a key, and that will be an account-specific key. The reason they use this is because, remember, um, they want to limit you to a thousand requests per day. So whenever you put your key in, they've got a little database of their own that counts how many times you've called this API and uses that to bill you for usage. Pretty useful for them. Next thing is this rapid API host. And this is a required thing. And it's just, you just send it as this. So you can see over here in the code snippet example, they've got a bunch of different languages. So for Node.js, um, which is, or JavaScript actually, we're going to use fetch. You can, you can see jQuery in XHR requests in here as well. So fetch, you can see the headers in here. These are the fetch options, which we covered uh, recently. Got the method, our key here, and then our host is always going to be this value. The key will change, but the host is always going to be that value. So we're, we're never going to change that. Then you can see we have some parameters on here. They have S, they have R, they have page. And so then we're going to take a look at what those are. Required parameters, S. Now see, these are not well documented. It doesn't tell us what S actually is, but based on context, the fact that this is a search API, I'm going to guess this is probably the search text to actually use. And Avengers Endgame. Optional parameters, R is probably the response type. So it doesn't tell us what values are available here, so we might have to fiddle around with that a little bit. JSON, the fact that it returns JSON is probably all we care about. Unclear what type is. Unclear what Y is. Page is going to be the page of results. Um, and then they give us example responses. So they say, okay, 
for this, here's the headers that you'll get back. We don't really care about most of these. These are all pretty standard headers. Um, and then the body, you can see these five items. This can give you some ability to build your code even without actually running this. And total results is five. So if there are 50 results, for instance, and we could see that, you know, then we would put page to get more results. Um, so what we would do then, if you really want to use this, uh, let's just go in here. Uh, so what I would want to do is, I don't actually make a new file um, to contain my API tokens. Now, the important thing about this is I don't want to commit this file, right? Because you don't want to commit your tokens. So if I go down to git ignore, oh, I already have secrets file. I can put, this is in, um, where is this? Examples API tokens. Save that. And you can see now the updates be gray. The gray in this case means it's not going to be committed ever. So what I want to do here then is I'm going to say this is a this is a JS file, so I can put JavaScript code in it. Const um, rapid API token. I'm not actually going to sign up for it. I'm just going to show you what it would look like. Then in this case, I want to actually import that script um, source equals api tokens.js and then here I can paste this code and then instead of this sign up for key I can I put this as rapid api token this is in the top level scope so it's accessible here and that's pretty much what I would need to do if I want parameters um, search well s I guess is going to be avengers end game r json and then page one and then what i can do and there's a way let me just look this up there's a way of turning um an object into an actual parameter list like this just turn into parameter uh query parameters and i'm pretty sure okay oh that's just so they're not a module for this. Well, Stack Overflow. Let's see what they've got. No jQuery. Oh, someone just got a function for it. Okay. Well, I'm just going to grab this function that they've put in here. And then, because we want to attribute code, uh, we'll go over what this does in a second. I'm actually going to go down to here. This converts your pro. I don't care about recursive objects. Um, and I'm going to say share, copy this link. And then from here. And so that way, if someone else comes along this code, they realize, OK, I didn't write this. This is not my code. If you want to look it up, it belongs to the person that wrote this comment, um, which is usually enough for doing attribution. You're usually OK with that. So then what I want to do is I want to call this. And I'm going to say const param string equals serialize params. So what this is doing is it's um, creating an array Let's actually step through it. Um, and when we open this, oops, let's just step through in the debugger. All right, so what we've got, we've got our object, OK? Step over this. We've now got this empty string, or this empty array. Now, for p and object, has own property is kind of a funny one. Um, oh, this is interesting. This belongs to here. Oh. I feel like something's gone wrong here. I want to pull this outside of the for loop, but then this belongs to that. Oh, this doesn't have. That's that's just bad syntax. Oh, well. So has on property is just kind of a, a fluff thing that we used to do because objects had some weird stuff on them. Um, you probably don't need to worry about it too much, but if you see it, just know that the idea is this in will sometimes pull out properties that actually don't belong to the object that belong to its parent and we don't we don't want that um, i know that's not super great explanation but that's that has to be a whole other video on that uh, so anyway inside here what are we doing here we're encoding the uri component now right now we have p is s um, but imagine and let's see object of p object p ah 
is oh object of s sorry is um nope quote oh my god is this thing spaces are not allowed in urls and that's what encode uri component does so if i put in code uri component of avengers end game end game you can see it puts this percent 20 that percent 20 is what's called a um, URL entity or an uh, HTML entity. It's not actually HTML, it's more of a URL entity. What that is, that encodes the space. So you can see in the example they gave here, they put that space in there. That's because, again, spaces are not allowed in um, in URLs. This The reason this can be useful is let's say I'm looking for Lilo and Stitch. Um, and Stitch. Well, the ampersand means something special in the URL. So if I actually write a URL, um, let me just do this in a comment here, that is like uh, .com uh, s equals low and stitch, um, the HTML, HTML parser, the browser, is going to look at this and it's going to say, oh, okay, s is Lilo, and then I've got an and, and then it looks for stitch as the key. It's going to look at that for the key of the next property, even though that's still part of this. So instead, what I want to do is I want to encode it. And JavaScript has encode URI component for that. And you can see if I do that, it becomes percent %26. The URL will look at percent %26, and it'll say, oh, that's not an ampersand. I can keep going. That's part of the original um, parameter. Otherwise, it's messed up. Same with um, like an equal sign. If you want to have an equal sign, there's ways to encode it. So that's what the encoding does here. It's encoding both the key and the value. Um, in this case, you can see now string becomes s equals Avengers 20% endgame. Okay, we go through the next one. That adds the r. And then finally the page. And then we're done. The next thing we do is we join those by the ampersand. And so that join takes an array and glues them all together and puts whatever you put here in the middle what that actually results in is that param string where all of these are now glued together so if i put that in here so we can see a little better you can see now there's there's the ampersand in between all these parameters so that's that's basically what this function is doing is it's t turning taking this object and turning it into a parameter string that we can put on the end here so then I can actually just put that here. And that will work. That will turn into that appropriate parameter string. What that means is that we don't have to build a bunch of that stuff. We could have done it ourselves. We could have said param string equals s equals plus encode URI component um, Avengers endgame and r equals json and page equals one and in some cases you may actually want to do this but it's, it looks kind of nasty and this just looks cleaner it's easier for you to add stuff later on so that's why i do it that way so uh, response console log response so what i'm going to do here is then actually return let's actually just take this out um, we're just going to return the response now what i can do is i can actually wrap this in a function get movie, movie, put all that in there. Now I've got a nice little function that wraps all this stuff. It gets the movie. All I have to do, and let's actually put movie in here. All I have to do is say get movie Avengers Endgame. And because it's a promise, um, it returns, actually let's return this. It returns a promise, then I can just say um, here, movie data and this is not an uncommon way to handle stuff like this um, in a lot of cases this is this is actually how you would handle these APIs you'd have something here that pulls in the specific headers that you need so like I need this token I need this host to be set this way the parameters here these ones are, I'm probably always gonna want JSON so I don't change that and in that case that's just kind of how you would want it to set up and if I run this, I mean, it's probably not going to run super well. It's probably actually going to fail because, oh yeah, you can see they actually, a param string is not defined because it's params. 
that's a fun bug. So fun thing there. You see how that's kind of that that uh, lighter color there. That can be an indication. It thinks this is a is a, like a definition like this. That's the actual variable. Um, you get used to these colors and kind of figure out oh something might be wrong there. Um, so if I run this, it gives me a 403. Um, and that's what we would expect. So we look up uh, response code 403. Client is forbidden from accessing a valid URL. The server understands the request, but it can't fulfill the request. So what that means, forbidden. They're, what they're saying is that my API token is wrong. If I take this out and don't send the API token, they send a 401, which means they couldn't authenticate me. I didn't send authentication. But that makes sense because I just made up this token, right? It's this clearly not a valid token. If you had an actual token here, you would put it in, and then they would be able to use it. Um, so that's that's this API. That's just kind of how you'd use that. Um, you go and you look here. If I wanted to, if I figured out what these is, are, that would be another thing. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of how you go about that. That's just an example of of how it handle this. And what I would usually do then is I would actually take all of these and I would make another um, make a folder for this party APIs because I kind of want to put more stuff in here. And then I'm actually going to take this and I'll put it in here. Yes. Put the API tokens in here. Um, you notice now this this is no longer um, an invalid thing because I have to go in here again and change it. Uh, third party APIs. Save that again. Every time you move the file, um, what you can also, this should work, I think. Um, this is a globbing pattern. Um, and that's another complicated thing we can get into in another video. But basically what that does is it says examples and then any number of directories inside examples. So see third-party APIs here. If I change this to be like tokens and pull this in here, um, it continues to match because of that double star there. It just says inside examples, no matter where you find it, this API tokens is not something that we want to uh, hold on to. Don't put it in Git. Um, so what I want to do then is I actually want to make utilities, utils.js. I'm going to put all this stuff in here. Um, and so I'm just going to toss that in there because get movie is the one I want, but I want it cluttering up my code. Skip source equals utils at JS. And now I can just call get movie whenever I want. Um, and I can call it again. I can be like, hey, why don't I get movie um, Lilo Stitch? Um, and you can see now I have access to this thing. I can put this somewhere else in my code. And there's a bunch of code here that's handling actually getting the, doing the fetch request, um, building the parameters that it expects, putting them in the right spot, setting up all the headers, but I don't have to worry about that. Um, we call this separation of concerns. The concern of this function is to get the movie. It doesn't really care where you're using that movie data. It doesn't care where it came from. It just knows that it has to deal with it. Whereas in this particular script here, it doesn't care how we're getting the movie data. It just cares that movie data is happening and this is how we get it. So we're almost building our own little API here. Um, get movie is an API function that we've now created that we can use elsewhere in our program. So this is a really common way of structuring code, uh, especially when you're dealing with external APIs. You don't want to be copying this code and putting this everywhere because it's kind of messy. So you encapsulate it in a single function. And that's what we call that when we take a bunch of stuff that has that is kind of related and we put it all in one place, we call it encapsulation. So we're encapsulating everything to get a movie from the rapid API. And then we're putting that into this function, which then we're making use of in the rest of the program. Um, so I know, unfortunately, we didn't actually get to run the API. Um, but if we did, we actually have, oops, we have an understanding of what it would do. We can look at the example responses. We can see one of the things is search. And then we look for um, each one of these is a search result. And inside that has a title. So what we could do here is we could say um, movie data results equals movie data dot search for 
var i equals zero, i is less than results.length. So we loop over it. We know this is an array because we're looking at the example data. And then we console log results uh, i dot, let's see, is that, that is an uppercase title. So we see, and we know that because they're giving us the response in here, which is kind of nice. Title. That would be a thing we could do. And now we don't, we don't really need to worry about this too much because we know that the API is being called and we know that it looks like this. We probably want to test it a couple times just by running it, but that's kind of how you go about that. So yeah, I um, hope that was helpful. Um, if, if you want me to do another API, anything in particular, just let me know and I'll see you all in class.